Welcome to the sixth session where we're going to discuss relational database systems. The fifth session we looked at the types of data models and now we want to extend it to relational database systems. Relational database system is a type of database that stores information in tables, rows and columns of data and that searches by using data in specified columns of one table to find additional data in another table. This session explains the relational data model terminologies, relational models, and the advantages and disadvantages of relational databases. At the end of the session, you'll be able to explain the relational operations the concept of integrity constraint, the difference between various relational keys, and also understand and apply the relational model to a given database, and to understand the integrity constraint of relational databases. The key topics to be covered in this session are fundamentals of relational databases integrity constraints of relational data models, and then types of relational keys, then finally, relational operations. These are the prescribed reading lists for this session. The first topic to start with will be fundamentals of relational databases. Relational databases have the following characteristics. One, the whole data is conceptually represented as an orderly arrangement of data in rows and columns called the relation. So the table in relational databases is known as relation. All values are scalar. That is, at any given time, the position or the row in that table is one and only one value. So any occurrence, any value in any of the cells, that is the row or column, is one. All operations are performed on an entire relation, and the result is in an entire relation as well. That is also known as closure. So you perform the operation on that table, and the result is still kept in that table, which is known as Fred Code, as stated earlier, came out with a relational data model through his research, and it has been very useful to other people now, other database development as at now. So now let's look at this table. The first row stands for n tuple, and all the rows are tuple. Now the column headings. For example, the employee code, name, and year are all attributes. And in relational databases, we have the attributes, and then we have the rows, and we have the end tuple, which is normally called tuples. The, the cardinality of a relation is the number of tuple in a given relation. And for the one that we've just seen, you realize that we have four tuples, and therefore the cardinality of that relation is four. The cardinality of the relation stands for the number of rows, the number of rows, number of uh, tuples that are available. Again, the degree of relation, we're talking about the number of attributes in the relation that is under study. And for the table that we saw, you realize that the number of attributes in the previous table, in this table, we have three different attributes. And therefore, the degree of relation is three. Cardinality is four, because we have four main rows in this table. The domain. A domain definition specifies the kind of data represented by the attributes. More particularly, the domain is a set of all possible values that an attribute 
may vaguely contain or may contain. Domains are often confused with data types, but this is incorrect. Data type is a physical conception, while domain is a logical one. Nama is a data type, and age is a domain, and so this stands for the domain system. The body of a relation. The body of a relation consists of an unordered set of zeros or more tuples. There are sometimes important concepts to consider. The relation is unnamed and then could also contain more than one attribute. These are the individual assignments and forum questions that will be posted to the Sakai platform and at the right time, you'll be given the go ahead to work on it. Integrity constraints will be our second topic to consider. For integrity constraint, these are the rules that are used or the rules that governs the development and then the construction of any database system. Before one can start to implement a database table, one must define the integrity constraint. Integrity means something that like be right or something that must not be done or must not go into the system. The data in the database must be right and in good condition. Integrity constraint or rules are there to ensure that the data is accurate and consistent. There are the domain integrity, the entity integrity, the referential integrity, and the foreign key integrity. And these are some of the integrity constraints that we'll consider shortly. The domain integrity. The domain integrity means that the definition of a valid set of values for an attribute should be allowed in the system. It is a decoration of the columns according to which a set of values can be stored. Definition of data type, the length or the size is no value allowed in the value chain or in the value of the column. These are some of the domain integrity that are allowed in the database environment. The entity integrity constraint. The entity integrity constraint states that the primary keys cannot be null. And therefore, for any table, for any relation, the primary key must have a value. There must be a proper value in the primary key field. And this is because the primary key value is used to identify the individual rows in the table. If there will be no value for primary keys, it will mean that we, have, we could not have any identifier for those rules, and therefore the a primary key can never be a null. There must be something to identify. The referential integrity constraint tries to deal with the combination of the foreign key and also the primary key. There must be agreement between the two. There must be a relationship between the foreign key and then the primary key, and so as the reference to the foreign key can be assessed as much as possible. A referential integrity con constraint designates a column or a combination of column as a foreign key and establish a relationship between the foreign key and then the specified primary key or unique key. And this can be used for referential purposes. So these are the constraints in terms of referential integrity. There are some few rules that governs referential integrity. For example, you have to delete the record from the primary key and then the matching existing records in any other key. You can also change the primary key value but must correspond to any other table that bears the same primary key and a host of others. And these are some of the referential rules that govern the database development. Now let's talk about the foreign key integrity. For the foreign key integrity, there are two foreign key integrity constraints, cascade updates 
relating to the field and cascade delete update relating to the rules. So we have the key and then we have the rule and all this must be adhered to. Any time you change the primary key of a rule in the primary table, then the corresponding table must also have the key change and that constitutes the cascade update related field. The cascade delete related rules. Anytime you delete a rule in a primary table, the matching rules are automatically deleted in the related table. And this constraint overroots some of the rules in the referential integrity. Now, thirdly, let's consider the concept of keys, since there are different keys used in database systems. A key is an attribute of a table which helps to identify a rule. There can be many different types of keys which are explained here shortly. Let me explain these keys shortly. Now, super key or candidate key. In any table, in any relation, you need a unique identifier that will stand out as a key for that table. It is such an attribute of a table that can uniquely identify a rule in a table. Generally, they contain unique values and can never contain no values. You cannot have a super key or a candidate key that does not have any value. In that case, it cannot be a super key or a candidate key. Now, a primary key. A primary key is one of the candidate key that are chosen to be the identifying key for any entity or for the entire table. Now, for any table, in terms of database development, must have a key, must have something that uniquely identify that table. And in choosing the key, we choose the primary key. The alternative key is the candidate key, which is not chosen as a primary key of the table. So when you have more than one candidate key or super key, one is chosen as a primary key, and then the other as an alternative key. So the one that is not chosen as a primary key serves as alternative key. Then composite key. Sometimes one key is not enough to uniquely identify a row. Therefore, we need to put one or two or three entity and two or three attributes together, two or three keys together to identify a particular um, table or use as a row, as a row key or as a primary key for a table. And this is what we call the composite key. Having more than two attributes, fields or column headings coming together to identify a table. We also have the foreign key. Sometimes we may have to work with an, an attribute that does not have a primary key of its own. And in that matter, a foreign key is a key that is a primary key in a different table. So in a different table, it will serve as a foreign key, but in the mother table, it will serve as the primary key. And these are some of the keys we have discussed so far. We have looked at the super key. We have also looked at the candidate key, primary key. We have looked at alternative key. And then we have also looked at the reference foreign key. Now let's turn our attention to some of the operations of relational databases. And that will be the fourth chapter. One, for a given relational database, we can insert records. So there is insert operations that can be carried out using the database or using the relational databases. We can also carry out what we call the update operations. So we can also update the system. Apart from inserting a new record, we can also update the, the existing records in the database system. And these are some of the operations that can be carried out in the relational database systems. Now, we can also delete. So we can insert, we can also delete, 
and then we can update. And these are all some of the operations that we can carry out in the relational data model. And of course, record retriever. We can retrieve any record from the relational data model. And with this, we come to the end of the relational data model. Now, these are references will be made available on Sakai. So please do visit the Sakai site for the information. See you in the next session. Thank you.